I'm Neuralnar, and this is a standard mini fridge. It is super exciting, just like me. And today we're going to make a video about it. Now, like a lot of the things that I work on, I got this fridge for free, and I thought it'd make a good project. We'll see how efficient we can make this refrigerator. Now, it came with a bunch of stuff. I got user manual for it, nice cube tray, some shelving, defrosting tray, another shelf, and most importantly, the energy guide. And I'll show you this a little bit later. But the reason I got this refrigerator for free is because it was at the office. About six years ago, a bunch of us got together and purchased this refrigerator so that we could store our food and beverages and whatnot in it. But uh, after a while, the thermostat gave out, and it would no longer keep anything cold. So <clears throat> I said, hey, I'll dispose of it. And instead of disposing of it, I got a new thermostat. This was shipped to me, this is the old one, but it was shipped to me from Hong Kong for a total of seven dollars. I don't know how anybody can make money on that, but I put the new thermostat in and it seems to work again. So let me give you the grand tour of this fridge real quick. You'll notice the smooth white exterior of this refrigerator with the prominent badge higher here, however you pronounce that, to tell everybody that it's made in China. You open the door, has a couple of shelves, a freezer with a burn hole in it. <laughs> Can anybody guess why there's a burn hole in the freezer? Well, because when the thermostat quit, I hotwired this to stay on permanently. And I then put a heater inside the freezer compartment to keep everything from freezing. And it worked pretty well for half a year or so, but uh, we eventually got tired of it icing up because of the cord that went inside and uh, decided to throw it away, so now I have it. Anyway, I have the new thermostat in it, and it seems to work pretty well again. All the shelving is out of it at the moment. has a magnetic gasket that's in good condition. And what's important here is that on the back of it, it has the exposed coils. Some of them have the coils inside, and then it uh, heats up the outside of this, and you can't use those for this project. But uh, this style, you can has the compressor in here. It is a Samsung compressor, so they did not cheap out on the compressor. And it is standard mini-fridge construction. Compressor goes through this line to your condenser. It's not a proper radiator, it's just a tube. Zigzags down, goes over here. It does not have a proper expansion valve. It just runs through this little tubing. And that's what it uses for the expansion valve. It goes up into your freezer compartment. <coughs> And you can see the pipe running up here into your freezer compartment. It goes up, runs through these uh, evaporator coils up in here, comes back down to through this pipe, back down to the compressor, and repeats the cycle. Now, I'm going to do a few things to this refrigerator to see how much more efficient I can make it. But first, I want to do a test to see how efficient this thing really is. This is the energy information guide that came with it when it was new. You can see that it's about middle of the range back in uh, 2006 or whenever this was sold, I forget exactly, but um, it uses about 325 kilowatt hours a year. And to put that in perspective, a full-size upright refrigerator only uses about 500 kilowatt hours a year. So this little thing uses almost as much as a full-size refrigerator. And that's pretty sad, so let's see if we can improve on that. But before we do, I want to make sure that uh, I have a proper baseline to judge my improvement from. So I'm just going to set this up in my basement and uh, run it for a couple of days and see how much electricity it really uses. And then we'll see about the modifications. And this is my test setup to check the standard efficiency of this mini fridge. I just have it freestanding away from all of the walls. It's plugged in, sitting here in my basement. It's uh, about 60 degrees in my basement, so it's fairly cool. I have it plugged into my kilowatt hour meter. Right now it is off. Uh, it's shut off. It's reached its proper temperature. And this, I just have a thermocouple running inside the refrigerator somewhere. And it's reading 3 degrees Celsius, 2 or 3. So that's about fridge temperature. I'll leave this running like this for a day or two. Come back and see how much energy it's using. 
All right, let's come down to my messy basement here and take a look at my refrigerator. It uh, is still at about three degrees Celsius, and it's been three days approximately, just under three days, and you can see that it's used 1.44 kilowatt hours during that time. So this refrigerator, sitting in a 60 degree environment, 60 degree Fahrenheit environment, without opening the door or using it, the refrigerator is completely empty right now, it takes about one half kilowatt hour per day, which isn't too bad really, but let's see if we can improve it. I have the refrigerator on its face on the floor here. Now obviously the first thing to do is to make sure that your equipment is in good working order, the refrigerator that is, that the uh, door seal seals properly all the way around, that there isn't any major mechanical uh, damage to the refrigerator, that uh, it's in good working order, <clears throat> and as far as I know this refrigerator is. So on with the modifications. Now I want to separate the heat producing components from the cold interior of the refrigerator, and this compressor is a good place to start. The compressor is underneath the refrigerator, all the heat from the compressor rises up here and uh, goes right against the cold interior of the refrigerator through this thin insulation here, both above it and beside it, underneath it in this case. So I want to insulate that a little bit better. Now the heat from the compressor isn't all dissipated in this housing. Um, a lot of it goes up through this pipe, up to your condenser. This is the radiator. Ideally it would all be dissipated here. If this is a household air conditioner, you can buy blankets that go over the compressor part uh, to, uh, uh, for audible reasons. This is a refrigerator, it doesn't have audible issues. And notice that this radiator is extremely cheap. This whole refrigerator they have to sell for $100 or less. So they have to make it as cheap as possible. This is not a proper radiator, and they actually rely on the surface area of this compressor as part of the radiator. So I don't want to insulate it entirely, but I do want to insulate it from the refrigerator. How to do that? Well, I am going to use some expanding foam and try to insulate the bottom of this better. And underneath here, uh, just separate this compressor from the interior of the refrigerator. And I'll use up this can of expanding foam to do that. And hopefully that will keep this heat from getting into the refrigerator. This foam is going to take a few hours to cure because it's really thick, so it'll take a while. It's still uh, nice and spongy. It should continue to, to uh, expand, I hope. But in the meantime, let's tackle this condenser. This condenser gets hot, it's right up against the refrigerator, very inefficient, so let's move it. Looks like in this case it's just held on by four screws. and it just pops off. Now, there's pipes and such in here that I don't want to kink. Nobody wants a kinky refrigerator. Uh, so I want to be a little bit careful with it, but let's separate this a bit from the refrigerator as much as we safely can. Now in terms of insulation, I'm going to use this one inch uh, closed cell foam. I happen to have a piece that just about fits underneath here, so I'm going to try to see if I can figure out a way to put this foam in there. Looks like these are just glued on, so I can just tear these off. And put my foam in.
That should separate the condenser from the refrigerator. Now it is important to have airspace in front and behind this condenser so that it can properly radiate. So I think I'm going to re-add these spacers underneath. Just screw these in into these spacers just so that there is some sort of air gap between this and the foam. That way the air can uh, rise up on both sides of this and cool quite well. All right, I have this one inch closed cell foam in, beneath, in between the refrigerator cold part and this condenser hot part, and I have the condenser mounted to the foam. I can very easily use an adhesive to uh, connect this foam to the refrigerator. I'll do that later if this ends up working out well. On second thought, why wait? I have these drywall screws. I just put a washer on each one, and I'm just going to attach this to the refrigerator. These should be long enough to go all the way through and enter the refrigerator. And then everything will be connected together. And I won't have to worry about it anymore. There we go. Now it's a nice, solid assembly. And here is our new and improved mini fridge. It looks pretty much the same. Except when you run around to the back. We have this piece of foam in here, and we have a whole bunch of expanding foam around the compressor. So, I'm not done with this yet, but uh, in the interest of being scientific, let's see how much these modifications have helped before we continue. I have my thermocouple in here just like before and I'm going to use my kilowatt hour meter just like before. So let's plug the refrigerator in and start it up. The refrigerator is running, it's taking 110 watts or so. It'll drop as the temperature in the refrigerator decreases. The refrigerator is at uh, apparently uh, 14 Celsius. So I'm going to let this run for a couple of hours and then reset my meter back to zero and let it run for a day or so. And we'll see how much these modifications have improved the efficiency of this fridge.